Our next star, come on. <laughs> this is Jurgen Bay. The reason um, I would like to talk about uh, the working landscape because there's, I have two situations. One is as a studio where the working uh, landscape is one of the main topics and it has to deal with that. I find it strange that if we talk about work, we always talk about uh, economics. And when we talk about economics, we talk about how can you work as fast that you have your uh, uh, weekend off, long holidays, uh, stop your work at 65, and that's just because the language is into economics and not into work. With anyone you talk about work, they get immediately interesting and they talk freely about it. And that's also why I wrote aloud that the new landscape works and the language of things, and if values changes and nothingness gets more important, language directs, which means if nothingness is really important, what we say now that we call it sort of hard times because there is less, and therefore we would say more nothingness, we would, it's quite strange that we find that very hard. Of course, if you look at the sky, then the beauty of the sky is that there is so much emptiness, and then we never discuss can, how can we make it more full. It's the enjoyment of nothingness that is, really important. And um, my other hat is uh, being part of the uh, Sandberg Institute in Education, which is a very nice place because it's the only place where economics is not discussed. It's about what you're headed for, what your vision is, and you try to put as much energy in that. And it's also the place where you can only share. Like no one keeps knowledge in its pocket because if you want to teach and if you want to get the projects further, everything goes on the table. There is no competition in a sense that you don't let others look in your cards, you're very open with it. And it's the best place to be because it's the most of, my, most of time that is spent there. There's like, uh, you can work with uh, at least of weeks of 18, 80 uh, hours. And then we have uh, in our institute 90 students, you can count how much time gets spent on knowledge and sharing it. And when I got educated, then learning from Las Vegas was a big thing, which was like making from a desert where there is nothing into an economical uh, area. And, and uh, just after that, uh, learning from Dubai is a bit the same. And uh, now I am, again, as a third time in Sand, but then in an institute that is, that is a master course about uh, art and design, which is a very privileged place because I'm very happy that I'm not only into design, which is so-called the creative industry, the new next promise, and the way it's been discussed already kills a lot of open thinking and the beauty of art is that it is like a very open language that everyone that says something about it feels that he is right because it's an, it's an open language, as in literature. Everyone who reads a book thinks that he reads what he sees and never feels like discussed by anyone else, whether he is right or wrong. And for me, this project from Francis Elise is one of the highest pieces that I know because I find it really incredible. Like moving mountains is something that's been discussed so much that no one really literally goes to a place and really founds hundreds of people to actually shift the mountain without any complaints, without any payment, it's been done. And it became like a big social issue. All the people that gathered and discussed, they will be the ones that will tell like in 200 years within the generation, like that they were there when the mountain was moved by all the people. You can imagine what kind of stories will come out of it. And I think still that this is this kind of nothingness where you have to think like, maybe if we just change it into nothingness and make it very expensive, then we cannot talk about the prices anymore because like entrepreneurship is like the easiest way to start. You just tap yourself in a corner and say, here is nothingness and you can sell it. And, it's, and it is also because it is a precious thing, nothingness. Just nothing, nothingness is like, it should be like extremely expensive. So, so in that sense, what we need is indeed another kind of thinking, another kind of language, because it's really like how to talk about it and how to think about it. This is from Jupp van Lieshout, who printed his own money, his own economics, and building his own economics, which is the question, 
how to deal with it and where, but it will open a lot because I do think that it's just a mediator. The money was only there to make it more easy to discuss things. It was never meant to be the matter, and it became the matter. And it's the same with language. This is from Hans van Halen, the first written character that has doubt in itself. So for the first time you can send people an email and they don't get angry immediately because there is air in between what you say. It's a debate, like you act and say things, but the words are like to be doubted, which is very nice because then you can be very clear and that's always like this giving, which will probably that if you start writing with these letters how a city should be, then this might be the city that you want. Because that's the nice thing, if you change your language, then it will actually also change what comes out of it. Because that's our negotiation, it's all done by language. And, and the not nice thing from now, which I think it had its um, reasons, but now it's all done by solicitors. Now it's like written down in a way that anything that might happen tomorrow that you don't want has to be written down in a contract, which opens or closes down any next future. Because for the future, you do not know what you need in your pockets. Big chance that the things you think is not very necessary now are probably the biggest thing you need in the next generation or the next, next term. So be aware with what you throw away. It's better to shift it and make sure that it's still somewhere that others can act to it. Because cars that do not drive fast, like why would they still look as if they could? Because the biggest frustration in a car is not because it doesn't bring you from one place to another, which we know now by the Tom Tom. If you watch, if you have like small queuing, your time of arrival doesn't change that much. The frustration is that you are braking all the time, that you have this car that says I can 200 and you can only go 50. So you are never to be able to have your feet at rest. It's always like going up instead of going down. And I think that's the biggest frustration. Also the biggest frustration is probably that you think that all the things you did wrong during the day and lost your time with, in this 10 minute drive, you're going to make it well. You step in your car and you think this is the moment that I will win back my hours of frustrations and waiting. And that's what's not going to happen. And it's exactly, again, why it goes wrong. So why do we think that when you go from A to B, that's like an in-between time? No, it's the time, and it's part of your being. That's the beauty of all the equipment that we get. There is no time in between. You are, and you can do everywhere, anything. <laughs> and especially with our Google again uh, uh, calendar, you can change everything. Like if you want to go to the gym, why should it be in the city you're always in? Why shouldn't it be halfway or in the beginning of your trip? So to change your day is possible because everything is everywhere. Like how much things we have is that, like whatever you want, if you want a library, it's always there. Like the literal one, but also the one that goes on the, on the internet. So we also have to think about what kind of cars do we actually need? Do we want like a car that goes fast or do we want a social car? Because we also know there is this amazing thing with a car. It's totally from glass and you can be like very nasty to your neighbors, but also to yourself. You can pick your noses because it's somehow this bubble gives us the privacy that is unseen. And it stops us from meeting and discussing with people. And the beauty of this car done by an artist is that it works on uh, wood and it's very simple and very easy and it makes that wherever he goes he meets people so it's the first social car and that's the nice thing that now that the world is so open you can question what do you really actually want do you want a social car then there's a possibility because if I take my car and, and, and change that in a social car it's like very difficult because the thing shouts for driving and, and, uh, and, uh, and driving fast or is it that we only want to hear like literally when we're going somewhere or is it possible to have like angels in your car if you dri drive over a road that goes through the former sea so the artist has the possibility to use like the equipment he already has but he can rephrase what we actually want and change it and it's the same if you look at this construction work, uh, this is made out of wood with all the ornaments. You can imagine if you would build a house with this as a cement one, that, that cannot be an ordinary house anymore. 
but also the materials, they will start discussing. So we were meant to be in the, in the bricks, but now that we have like our cement machine that's so beautiful, we will step out of the way and we want our own lives. We want to act completely different. As Theo Janssen does with his machines that are actually animals just made out of the tubes of plastic, like very ordinary metal, uh, material just made for in the walls, not to be seen, just to be handy and that's it. And he can actually give them brains and muscles and everything just by acting and spending his whole life on these kind of animals. So these things are actually to protect us from the sea. Because while they're walking on the wind, they throw some sand up, gets blown towards the um, dunes, and they grow. So these are our new gods. They are taking care of us, and they're taking care of that the sea level will not well, it will rise, but it will not rise over it. But then if it becomes machine, you can also think that machines will get hungry and start eating. And then from well therefore, is there like the shit machine? Which you can imagine that we all could have thought about the idea, let's make a machine that can make shit, which probably a lot of people do anyhow make shit. So actually to change it into even a proper thing, and then you can imagine, you can say, well, Okay, it's a, it's a nice idea, but the amazing thing by doing this, actually activating it, he got like a whole team of the best scientists to help him because they also thought like, whoa, if we make a machine that can make shit, we get knowledge how it gets done. And so they cooperated because they felt like, whoa, it's not just like a nice idea and that's it. There are possibilities there of knowledge. So you can see that in this working society to debate is a lot easier. And the question is, what do we want? Like, is it the drawing, like the abstract world, or is it like the actual reality? Which I also never knew that in any ethic, there is a heart that you can take out and make, which I think is amazing, because I always thought that an ethic was just there to have all my rubbish and like to forget and not clean it up again. So for me, the question is, do we go with all this knowledge to a hyper-realism or do we go into an abstract world? And what do we get out of it? And what do we wish for? And maybe it is time to have a manifesto again, to say, OK, this is where we stand for, this is where we're heading for. And then to have the right direction machine, which is the most clever machine, of course. That's what we needed. Just one machine, which has been done by a student that said, like, I'm going to make the right direction machine. And the nice thing of that is, if you just start running behind it with thousands of people, it will be right because thousands of people can never be wrong. So in that sense, it's like the ultimate way because what we do now is waiting, 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 making new plans. Is it a good plan? Is it a bad plan? What can happen? Will it be the right thing? It will be the right thing as soon as you go and activate it with all the people. And that means that we have to think about like what is a craft? What is a talent? Because we always think that there is only like certain amount of talents and the rest has to be done. And when it has to be done, it cannot grow because then no one wants to be it as long as possible and the one who is it will never grow because you always feel guilty about not having succeeded in what you do. First, it will be your mother you will talk to and to, and then you get children, and then again to your children, and you feel a bit uncomfortable, and it's like the most stupid thing, because I do think everything is a skill, and everything has a talent, because cleaning is like the most important part, because it's the only place that takes care of things, and it's the first person that sees if anything goes wrong, if he or she really does it well. And the beauty of this project from Martin Baas is that he made it into a clock, but also, that it becomes like a talent. And when it becomes a talent, then you want to get like better and better skills and better and better instruments to do it. Not the, the instruments that we say that it all gets automatically done, because automatically done is like pushing with fingers and pointing out. And, and I do think that my finger is already like when I started already like 10 times as long, because this seems to be the only thing that works well and, and, and probably my mouth. But then that's then probably like what I do best. But you feel also that it's so important to have other skills and enjoy it, but also like when it would be a skill, then it would also mean the enjoyment of it, which would also mean that you would make the best material of it. And this is a broom 
that we found in India, which is made of peacock feathers, which is in our way of thinking not so clever, because you think it's just for cleaning, let's use rubbish material. But if you use beautiful material, then you can expect that it also gets nicer to be done, but also that the work gets easier, because you can imagine that dust also have their wishes, and they want to be treated well, and if they get treated well, they will act well. And you can imagine that when you have peacock feathers, and they say they'll only be there on Thursday, but then they will only be there on Thursday, then U.S. dust will only be there. Because there's no sense in being there on Wednesday, on Sunday, or whatever day. That's the day you're there. And then you all want to be in front of it, because you want to see it, you want to be touched by it. So cleaning becomes like extremely easy, because they're all willing to go with you. And I do really believe in these things. So we made like a, a pieces out of um, porcelain, which is like very delicate, and you can only use it when you do it very delicate. And you can really imagine that when you would work with these things, that you would become like a violent play, which is also like fighting with graffiti. It's like being able to make the most beautiful tunes because they're so um, small. They're small and they're never there exactly where you know. So you have to feel it and you have to touch it. And you can imagine if the same would become with dust, that when your cleaner would be in your place at work or at home, you would be sure there because it's a beautiful way of moving. It has like its qualities and then you're there. And the person that actually works with it can also grow because it becomes part of a professional place where you work and where you grow, which I think is the most important part of working is that it's the place where you develop yourself. And when you develop your dam, it can really like actually change the situation. Because the second project we did with this dust thinking is changing a vacuum cleaner in collecting dust, making things. And the whole idea with this is that if this would become like the new bags for shopping, then every Sunday when we all go into the city to buy our things and go with plastic or paper bags back home to unpack, pack it and bring it back into a, a cabinet and have the minute of enjoyment of the newness. This would mean that we would all go on Sunday with our vacuum cleaners into the city, all clean up the whole city and bring all the stuff back home and enjoy using it. And you can imagine when you go Monday back into the city for your work, that it's like splendid, it's beautiful, it's clean, it, well, it smells well, and you have the enjoyment of and the shopping and the working. So there are possibilities. And for me, it's still so strange why we still have so much energy and, and pointing towards leisure, like where we live. Although we all know we are hardly there, because if we're home, we're thinking, where do we go on a holiday? Where do I go out? Which movie am I going to see? So the home is still where we put all our energy in, but it's not the place that we are the most, that we use the most. And, and also the home is being made, it's a whole production place so at the end the home is just a, a factory it's a factory where a lot of people came to work and that's also where i think it's so strange that so much emphasis of design is always on the leisure side on this luxury thing and the most luxurious part is still at work because if you would be like a pilot then you have a boss that will buy the buy the most expensive airplane that he can afford and you are allowed to, to use it. So it's even, it even goes with property the other way around. It's about having nothing, but being able to use the best equipment ever. So the beauty of this environment of work for me is really incredible because I've never made anything that comes close to this situation, like the Fiat factory where they have a test track on the roof, the containers that build their own um, cars that are so specific and so beautiful this as a way of listening to the orbit so huge ears which is then the development of like for the close and small things these are the machines just to be able to see this so then you think like why are we still like working on chairs and tables and cabinets if there's like a huge field that still is to be discovered and to change into a working field because I do think that the work field and the space should be able to compete with the forest that in the morning you think shall I go left to the forest or would I go right to the work and then not to think because I have to work but just because of the enjoyment of the place and the beauty of it and you see like how it already addresses to our landscape how our landscape is completely 
changing and not getting worse, it's only getting more beautiful. And even this, I do think that it's just a matter of time that the, the, the production gets cleaner and cleaner, but also we know that all the materials get so expensive that no one will just bring the materials outside. You will all get it and all, and, and, and um, uh, I don't know the English word for it, but like uh, as a farmer collecting it and reusing it, harvesting it, which we already do in the in the in the glass houses as a as a complete uh, closed uh, function. And even if you think about like how the computers are built and the chips are made, there's no dust allowed. And this is then the landscape that it makes, which is like amazing in the way it addresses and also like how it will change our uniforms and therefore our behavior. And then this is a project that's been done uh, by Mo. He, he was an art, uh, well, he was a student at the Royal College. And he made a suit that on the left he's wearing the suit, on the right is how he sees himself. So on the back there is a camera and he really acts like in a computer game. So he works in reality and sees reality through a glass. And you already can imagine what happens if you add filters to it and, 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 and think about like how you can fill reality with what is unreal or what is unreal, like everything you see is real because you act towards it. So the possibilities of now, when we started with the computer, but now the computer is already getting out of it and becoming part of the reality. And it's the same that if you are an activist and against something, then normally it gets a bit messy and beautiful because you want to be seen and you want to be clear that you don't like the situation. But what happens if you are against something and you would wear this suit, like really nicely dressed, and only addressing to the people that are open to see it? Because this is like the green screen. So it means that through your telephone you can see what this activist is saying. And then you could say, yeah, but then no one will listen. But it's not the case. It is like if you have a debate, you're interesting. If you're getting better in something, you're interested in who is opposing your ideas. But you do it at a moment that you're also ready for it, which means that you don't get the frustration, you don't get the ugly words, you are actually starting to discuss and make things better. And that's also where I believe that a big change is going to happen, since the computer went from a big room into a like, small laptop, being able to act everywhere. It will happen the same with the production methods, and we already see it. The machines are getting extremely small, which means it can go back into the city. Production is not anymore like somewhere outside of the city. We'll get like inside, and we'll also start the guilds again as they used to be. But we, in guilds, we always think that it's about the master and the the apprentice. But that's only one part of it. The main thing of guilds was the social behavior of it. It was a part of a society that took care of the city, that took care of the people, took care of living. And that was the main thing of a guild. Because we always think it's about this learning method, but it's not. It's about like how you build a community and build things. So with these new guilds, we need new situations. And you already see the first machines are really small. So this is like the shoemaker. We all know from the end of the 80s, in the city we got all these small shoemakers where they could brush it, but they could also make what was not done. So actually you talked again to the one that's actually making it, not some kind of a help desk that after the third question will always. So you can find it on the internet. So there is no answers there. There's only like collecting services and saying we do our best and that's it. But if you actually start being able to talk with the ones that make it, then production will become like small scale, but also one to one and in the city, which will change our cities completely. Now, if we want to live somewhere, we always discuss like, do we get like a park close? Do I get a um, uh, a school close, do I get a nice road with uh, a lot of green of there, but what happens if working becomes part of the city again? Which means that 24 hours it's being used, so it can be much denser, but it can also get a total different quality. And the beauty of this is it's a, it's a pensionated um, robot, because the robot is not fast and good enough for mass <coughs> production, but for small production from one designer it's the best machine, because Imagine that, like, uh, I still know when I bought my first Makita of my first money, well, that was probably the same age as he bought his first robot, and then a robot like that. That, I think, already is amazing, and it's not about the size, but it's also the possibilities of it. And it's the same with this, which is a project that uh, makes 3D printing with clay, 
But the other side, what is really beautiful of it, and now I see I miss half of it, but that on the right side, to really mold the space is done by a laser. So it means that when you touch with your hand, then you can make this shape, which also means, again, like with dancing, that your behavior and like how you act with your hands will get as precise as a dancer does. It's the same what I said with the cleaner. Like when you have like very delicate material, there is no graffiti to fight against anymore. You have to be wearing yourself and dancing very nice. And then you also, if that's the way people make things, then they will also walk completely different through the streets because they have been learning from dancing, which means that their behavior will be completely different. So, so the outcome of these things is not just the thing, it's the whole landscape that will change from it. It's the same if we start using edible things to also grow materials we want to use. And it's not about reusing so much, it's more about like small scale farming that's possible again. Because now a small scale farm has not to compete with all the um, uh, milk that comes from a huge company, he can compete by saying, okay, I'll take a designer and we'll use my uh, harvest for products which I can sell a lot more expensive and therefore I can have like small scale. So, so it, it also brings like a complete different of behavior and possibilities of society or this which is all printed by roots and all the colors are made of uh, materials that we normally eat. Or, that we now have this discussion that we have overweight because we ate too much sugar, then we can say sugar is bad, and then we say all to all these farmers like, okay, you're not allowed to make it anymore because it's bad for our children, we shouldn't do it. But that's stupid because it has developed like an amazing production, an amazing possibilities. Why shouldn't we use it? Why shouldn't we like be able to make sugar things that are actually products again? And in this time, it's a, a jewelry, but you can imagine that that's everything that you can make out of it. So then you use like a production method that has been developed itself so much into reusing it. So it's not bad that we had all the sweets so that we could develop this production method. No, it's very good, but you have to reuse it now in a different system. And, and or, or, or if we think like much more scale, small scale here, it's like a chicken that you bring and that at the end from the chicken skin, you also make your jacket, which is of course like a method that takes a lot of time and it's only meant for a lot of, for a little amount of people. But, uh, but again, it's like a training situation and it's a situation where you can grow in a very small scale. So small scale, big scale is a thing that can be used. And even the cabinet maker that makes cabinets out of um, old paper, which is like what used to be like uh, sharpening the knives, which is like really old school almost. But imagine that that's, this can compete with the IKEAs when you go into an area that has just been uh, there where the people start uh, living, then they need a lot of furniture. And then this person could live in that place. And as long as he has customers, he can make it from all the papers that they read and then move to another place where he's needed again instead of having like all these IKEAs where we all go buy our car to get our stuff and build it ourselves because it's cheaper but the annoyance of this building yourself it's not that nice because it's all do it yourself it means that you're making a cabinet instead of something else that you do a lot better with a lot more enjoyment and it's the same if we think about like how factories actually look because this is it's an energy maker and a house. So it's like, it is never meant to be like a, a nice living place. It's a factory. It's a factory of energy. As this is a factory of uh, um, collecting. A farm was only there for the animals and uh, for uh, all the harvest. And yes, you had to live next to it. And that's how this has developed. So to think about these factories that are ugly and just make like uh, 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 straight walls is stupid thinking. Even this is like a factory that uh, transports where people live. And imagine this one, this person has always a different view. And, and you could imagine that you would add your house to it because it would mean that probably you know that at seven o'clock in the morning it will be at Leiden in Holland and at nine o'clock it will be in Amsterdam, which means that your house will not have a fixed address. It will have an address where you are when you need to be there. Well, transportation in Holland is so easy, so it doesn't really matter where you have to go, at least as you know where you're going. And the beauty of this is that your view will be always different, but also like the annoyance of a house bought in a place that seemed not as nice as you thought when you bought it, 
This will never happen here because it moves all the time. So it has totally different qualities. And these are the qualities that when you follow them, they will change your method, your behavior, and also the possibilities of building. So this is this, what I said, this annoyance of a car that wants to go 200 but only goes 25. This car will only go 10 kilometers an hour, which is actually just a desk chair that has the possibility of moving itself. And you can imagine that when you need, when you have an appointment, you can put it on and then it slowly will move to its place. And you can keep on working while you are driving to your place. So it's, again, it's like this in-between space does not exist anymore. Because if you go slower, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to adjust. And you go as fast at the end, because if 3 o'clock is 3 o'clock. And if you leave at 2 or you leave at 2.45, uh, that doesn't really matter in this case. So to think about like how your landscape and your behavior will change is like sketches that we make, like how we think like, okay, if streets are not streets anymore, but all squares, if there's only slow uh, traffic, then it would mean that roads can be more, much more graphically. They are just zones that are used for certain times in certain places. So then this could be a way of like uh, changing the behavior, but also changing the uh, environment and for us because we are like we're still product designers so for me it's not as much that we want to build this but it's trying to understand like how to deal if you don't own space how do you deal with privacy how do you deal with concentration and how do you deal with the openness these questions are raised and through this we develop these kind of thinking and products and it's the same with this it's like a, it's instead of making a room you just have like space that you are invisible. And the beauty is you yourself are invisible because you see no one else, but the others who really want you, they can still see you. So there is like this privacy. And it's the same what happens with the telephone. If you work and walk and talk with your mobile phone, you have the idea that you're not in the space. And you see it if you sit in trains, you hear like the most private conversations just because you are not there anymore. And, and that is enough to have your privacy. Probably, do I need to speed up? Oh. So, so this is the way that um, you can develop your things and ownership can be like completely different. And the beauty again here is, this is all made for our working societies, the place where you are to work, trying to develop like a new landscape and a new kind of thinking. And we're now in a project in, uh, in uh, uh, Utrecht, which is uh, the um, uh, Rotsort, which, is, uh, which happened to be also uh, 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 like a Biennale. And this area is really in the center, and it's an industrial area. It's one of the last industrial areas, and they are <coughs> thinking about making it slowly into a living area, and then they have to make it like nicer, and then uh, you need uh, 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 people to enter it. I do not know, like I can't, like, I can't find the, the, the word for it, but that, that you have more activities, and, and we are trying to find out like, what are still the qualities within this area that are for production. And if the production method is going to change and becoming more small scale, can we then still use this area this way? And one of the first things that we did is bringing the Friday as a day of meeting. And, and because there are four curators and they all have designers to work with, and every Friday they work there. And the beauty of that is it means that we all know that this Friday is getting slower and slower into this leisure day. For Fridays, then you can do all these things you didn't you were not able to do in the weekend, just for you this time. And I think the beauty of this is that Friday becomes like a sort of an entrepreneurship. You are not with your boss, you're in your own place. And you meet all these people, they're all at work, they're all thinking. In the evening we have lectures, so at the evening you also get all this knowledge from others. But it's all meant to be like a study day, rather than a leisure day. And it really works extremely well in that sense. And, and I do think that that would be a, such a good idea to have the Friday as a new function, that it's like, this is the day that you activate things. All the things you have been thinking and trying during the week, on Fridays you can actually do them. And you have this space where people will meet in a different way. And we changed it, like we, we made it into like uh, four main things. So there is like uh, the area 
There's the help desk to raise all the questions from the area and the possibility. There's the uh, working landscape crosses, you see, that's something Sophie does, where it's about like the knowledge and the skills that are already there and how can you change them by crossing them with other words. So it's by crossing words, activities and skills and see if you can develop new ones of it. As one was doing like the back landscape is working landscape eating, which is about the production of food and possibilities, like developing tools that that can happen, and then that's like uh, going deep into it, which is more theoretical. And this is one of the, um, the one of the uh, projects that is shown, but also makes our identity. Project. It's, it's uh, from Jörg and Urs Leni. It's a, a digital spray can, so it's like the activist that sprays on walls, but then done through a computer, which is like, it's like, it, it's like, it's all the opposite of what it should be, but it does it, and it has like the uh, character of um, the, uh, uh, of the activist, but now. And that was also the last words that I wanted to say. Yeah. So you can all be an activist. <laughs> <laughs>